Hi, I'm Katie Ziskind. I'm a licensed marriage and family therapist as well as a certified 500 hour registered yoga teacher. I would love to be a resource to your community, children, adolescents, and teenagers who are struggling with relationships, feeling frustrated and angry, and may have even had a trauma history. I love doing play therapy with kids, integrating music-inspired therapy as a language for healing. I love helping adolescents who self-harm and may have some negative coping skills. Hi, Allison. Um, such as maybe some body image issues, um, drugs and alcohol, maybe even just your adolescents hanging out with the wrong crowd or kind of um, playing on the edge, testing some boundaries and you're needing some assistance. Hi, Carolyn. I also love empowering young adults um, who are going through a first breakup or are really struggling with kind of figuring out relationships. Like maybe you're a young adult that wants to date but you're feeling some fear and some shame and don't really know how to get started. Um, and I love a special niche for yoga therapy is our um, athletes, pro athletes, highly athletic individuals, Spartan runners, CrossFitters, um, personal trainers, um, as well as pro athletes, um, varsity, pro, um, who've been injured. So an injury not only affects your physical body, but it also affects your mind. Hi, Ken. Um, so when you've been injured, you can't do what you used to do. And what you used to do, you loved. You loved being so athletic. The mind is affected. So you get loads of anxiety, a host of depression, a sense of loss, a grief. You know, it really is a grieving process. If you um, recently broke an arm and you're so used to working out or doing yoga, that loss um, is such a huge thing. So I would love to help you through that um, personal transformation of self-discovery. So I wanted to do a quick video today. Hi, Ken, thanks for jumping in. It's so great to have you. Um, I actually walked by your synagogue the other day in Colchester and I was like, oh, Ken, I know where he works now. Um, so anyway, um, here are three tips. Whenever you have anxiety, you can press play on this video. You can even rewind it um, if you're still feeling anxious because sometimes it does, anxiety can last a long time. Other times anxiety might just be five or 10 minutes. When you have anxiety, it's really important to remember that it's something that will pass. It's going to feel really intense, but if you can remember, it will pass. You might say to yourself, this too shall pass. This feeling is just a feeling. It will pass on just like the weather overhead. So if you think about anxiety just like the weather, just like yesterday it was pouring rain and now it's really sunny. So your anxiety will pass but the only way for it to pass is if you remember that it will because when we identify with anxiety we become anxiety itself our entire self is taken over almost like anxiety becomes like a little parasite and then we truly believe that we are entirely anxiety but the truth is that only a part of you is anxious because you really have these incredible inner reserves. You have the wisdom, you have the courage, intelligence, and knowledge to get through the situation. You've been through many challenges before and successfully have overcome all of them. Since you're watching this video, you've definitely overcome them. Um, so here are three tips. The first tip when you have anxiety, tip number one is to sing. Lengthening your exhale will scientifically lower anxiety. When you have anxiety, you're breathing with the upper chest. So you're going, <sighs> you're not actually stimulating your vagal nerve or calming your nervous system. In order to change anxiety, you have to change how you're breathing. The first step, very easy, is to sing out. So for instance, you could put on your favorite song. If that is too complicated when you're having a panic attack, sing E-I-E-I-O, like old MacDonald had a farm, E-I-E-I-O. And by singing out, you actually, it ha you have to lengthen your exhale. It just happens naturally. So step one, if you have anxiety, is to sing. Immediately, just start singing. Um, who cares if you're making up a song? Um, and even if you're singing anxiety, like you're just singing, step one. Step two is to help yourself feel safe. 
Step two, help yourself feel safe. So this could be um, getting into a cozy place. So when we have anxiety, we feel like um, overwhelmed. You might have body changes, sweaty palms, dry eyes, dry mouth, um, grinding your teeth, um, picking your hangnails, biting your nails. All of these things come from anxiety. And so the next thing is to feel safe. So when you feel safe, you can actually start to work through the anxiety. That might be mean putting on some fuzzy pajamas, putting on some fuzzy socks. If you're at work, one thing that really helps me when I was at my old job, not my private practice, um, is taking off my shoes. So when you have anxiety, you might just start to feel like you're crawling out of your skin. So if you can take off your shoes, kind of stretch out your toes, take some ankle circles, that may really help. Um, and another great thing for anxiety, especially for children, is they love tiny spaces. So if you can set up like a little tent in your basement, like a carpeted basement, put some blankets in there, make a little cozy place. Um, some children this summer love happy hammock time. So you can set up a hammock in the backyard and kind of just wrapping in that hammock, um, kind of being in a little cocoon type thing is very safe for children. So children love making these forts and tents and getting the ceilings really low and just kind of curling up. And it's, it's a, actually a practice of safety. So as an adult, see what you can do to kind of, maybe it's just like putting your hood on like that might just be simple. It might just kind of mean like you need a little support around your ears. Last but not least, your third tip for working through and surviving anxiety is to notice your surroundings. So oftentimes when we feel anxiety, we are reliving a past experience. So you may have gone through trauma. You may not even have realized you've gone through trauma. And that experience is now living in your body because it's not actually been dealt with. So for instance, if your parents got divorced when you were 10 and now you're 45 and you're still having these really, really intense arguments with your spouse, you may not have actually grieved your parents' divorce and it could be um, subconsciously affecting your marriage. So that's just one example. Um, but things that we go through are held in our bodies. So notice where you are because oftentimes your mind will take you back to an experience when you were very small and you were a child and feeling unsafe and feeling like you had to protect yourself. So we get into this very vicious mode. Um, and when you're in that mode in a panic attack, it's really important to start listing things around you. So name five colors that you see. So for instance, in this room, um, I see my goldfish, so orange, um, yellow Play-Doh, a pink chair, um, a red pillow, a blue purse, um, a pink lavender and uh, rice large pillow. Um, so start noticing the things around you. Five colors and two smells. This one actually challenges your brain a lot because smells will help to balance your mood if they're very relaxing. Hi Justine, how are you? Thanks for jumping in. So when you have anxiety, this last tip is five things, five colors around you in the room and two smells. And the smells actually help to rewire your brain. So if you're sitting in your kitchen, just list smells. It could be unpleasant or pleasant, but you're gonna list five colors and two smells. So for instance, sitting in my office, I smell um, my lavender pillow, and I also smell the shampoo and conditioner I used. So just bringing your mind to the present moment. So I hope this video was helpful. Just to recap, tip number one when you have anxiety, sing out loud. By lengthening your exhale, you will instantly reduce anxiety. Oh, thanks, Justine. I appreciate your positive comments. That is so great. She says, thanks for doing these awesome videos. I so appreciate you watching. Tip number two for anxiety. Remember that sometimes, you know, all when we have anxiety, it's not always just the present moment, but it's really important to practice self-care and to really soothe yourself, you know, because anxiety can feel so powerful and so overwhelming. And I totally understand if you're struggling. I would love to be a resource for you um, in your community. And I just am so grateful that you're here enjoying this video. Um, so I love working with adolescents, children, teenagers, and young adults. Um, and if you know anyone that's struggling, please connect them to my services. You know, it would be 
so hard to know that they're out there still struggling when I'm offering these things. So um, feel free to call for your free 15 minute phone consultation. 860-451-9364. And you're also welcome to text, that's my business line. I just have a couple spots left in my schedule, so I would love to help you. Um, they will go fast. And if you're looking for more free videos, free self-help videos, and informational literature about parenting, raising adolescents and teenagers, and self-help tips, visit wisdomwithinct.com. That's wisdomwithinct.com. Thank you so much, and I hope you have a wonderful day.